Man, I don't know if it's just the end of cuffing season right now or Finnish dudes just have really good game because I have never seen so many bad bitches with lame as fuck looking dudes. Sun's starting to come out, you know, the the cuffing season couples are starting to get public with it. And boy, I gotta say, some of y'all did some work this cuffing season. I gotta gotta give credit where credit's due, players. So yeah, I needed to get that one off my chest. <laughs> Let's get into it. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Living for a Living, episode 104. Living for a Living, baby. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, 104. I wasn't sure. It's 103. I have in my notes 103, but I ended up doing that guest one with Robin Skies last week. It's a good one. I know it's a long one. Normally the guest ones are long because we just get flowing and going. And I don't like to put a time cap on it. I like to be, you know, channel my inner Joe Rogan. But Robin's a cool one. He's He's been on before. He's one of the, f- he's a TikTok friend. I met him through TikTok, um, just had a good feeling about him speaking his truth, not scared to say what the fuck's on his mind, and that was a really good conversation. I enjoy talking to him. He said some shit that I, I've been feeling deep down, but maybe scared to say it in a way. And so hearing him say it and getting to, and hearing it being verbalized, you know, maybe I, I'd been feeling it, but I didn't even know I was feeling it. But then when I heard it out loud, I was like, oh fuck, I really relate to that. So hearing him say some of those stuff is, is cool. And we went two and a half hours damn near without mentioning COVID or the war, which is at this point in life is quite an accomplishment, I have to say. I mean, I think I think we brought it up maybe once. We brought up like mandates and lockdowns in Canada when we were talking about why Canada was fucked and the government there is terrible. And it's just, it is crazy for me to hear a Canadian talk so much shit about the Canadian government because normally that's the kind of Canadian thing which Robin himself says is like, and that's what's screwing them over is they just, well, we're not America. We're, we're Canadian. And that like blind, that arrogance is blinding. So check that one out. As always, you know, this episode's brought to you by myself. Living for a living dot live. Check it out. Got a couple new things on there. Until this, this war stops, all profits going to go to the, the militias, the Ukrainian militias. So I think we actually, we had some good sales last week. Yanni got some shit, had a good finish sale selling week, super good finish selling week. Yanni, Julius, Kosti, they all bought some shit. So we're getting that living for a living shit out there, man. Cause I don't know. I will admit. Trying to do anything clothing brand related is really tough unless you're Kanye. And dude, episode three of Kanye's documentary, pretty sick. Although the way he did his boy Cootie, man, kind of fuck Kanye for that. But at the same time, it was really cool to hear. I'm not going to talk much about this, but it was really cool to hear Cootie say that Kanye told him like, a, I'm in a different space now. Now I'm acting. I'm like creating this character for himself, like Yay or Yeezy. And it was just like cool to see or hear the fact that Kanye like really acknowledged it. Because I think some people get into that like fame or whatever and ter- become a character without realizing it. Or without it being intentional. And so it was dope to hear Kanye. I mean dude's smart. Dude's a genius. So he's been plotting it out from the jump. 
Oh, do me one favor if you're listening on Spotify right now, please. They just did a new feature where you can rate the podcast on Spotify, like one, two, three, four, five stars. Give me a rating, preferably five stars. I don't know how it affects the algorithm, but I'm sure it does. If you're on YouTube, just hit that thumbs up for me, player. Just real quick. Just here, let me. I'll, I'll give you 10 seconds. I'll take a sip of this coffee. You hit the thumbs up. You hit the five star. We'll rendezvous in 10, all right? I'm serious, bro. Do it. Please. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Man. The snow is starting to melt, as you can see. Man. I got a new little setup right now. I realized I just thought had two thoughts, and I'm going with the second one. I realize I'm getting older by just how important a good chair is. My apartment only had the bed and the kitchen table. And I was like, dude, I need somewhere else to sit. So I got this chair and it's nothing special, but oh, you sit down and do one old man groan. Oh, man, man. my dad used to always do that when he'd get in bed. Oh, man, man. Just feels fucking good. Although I guess I've always had a dope recliner like everywhere I lived. I've, I've kind of always been an old soul, you know. <laughs> put that in my Tinder profile. Put that on just just an old soul in a young body. <laughs> yeah, and Callie, I, we found, we got a, we found all of our furniture for the most part at the dumpster. Bro, the dumpster's got some good shit, dude. I don't get why homeless people don't end up making a home outside with furniture from the dumpster. They're not thinking, man. They're really not thinking. But yeah, I got a recliner from the dumpster. Actually, we got our couch from Andrew Willis. His mom was getting rid of a couch, so we got that when I was in North Dakota. The, the apartment came with like this old retro like 70s recliner or maybe we had we had two of them I think my homie Bickle at one point like flipped over in it he got so I mean North Dakota guy like a Finnish guy got fucked up flipped over there's a, actually a lot of similarities between North Dakota and Finland Finland is basically the North Dakota of Europe Sweden's probably the Minnesota a little bit more, has a bigger city, a little more preppy. Norway is like Maine, maybe. Not Michigan, because Michigan's broke as fuck. I don't know what, Seattle. Maybe Norway's kind of the Seattle, because they got mountains and the coast. Portugal's for sure California. California. No, Portugal, yeah, drugs are legalized. There's hella homeless people there. Yeah, I'd say Portugal's Cali- But kind of Portugal and Spain combination are California. Because Spain has the good reputation. I don't know what... Poland is kind of the Florida, just in terms of like not giving a fuck about anything. There's kind of like no rules and no laws in Florida. I mean, there are, but people you know the florida man thing i bet there's you could find some pretty crazy headlines with polish man does this and i think that's what london's probably new york i would say or england's new york yeah something like that i didn't plan on talking about this at all this is kind of interesting though what would Ireland, maybe it's like Boston then. Yeah, yeah. Ireland's Boston for sure. Or Ireland's Massachusetts. You know, you know what I mean? Dublin's Boston. I'm I'm kind of relating cities to cities and states to, you know. What else? What else? Hmm. Who would be Texas? Maybe. 
I don't know who Texas would be. Who would be Texas? Comment comment what country in Europe is Texas. A lot of gun nowhere has guns down here. Oh, what's France? Kind of snobby. Not super friendly. Arrogant. Who would France be? France might be like Connecticut or hmm. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Moving on. I was going to say, man, the the sound of rain Ah, uh, no, fuck. I fucked that up. The sound of snow melting is like listening to winter crying because it's got to go home. And if you've ever had children over at your house, you can tolerate their crying when it you know it means they're leaving. But... With that crying, with that melting of the snow, is coming some iciness. They're trying to take you down with them. They're saying, if we're going home, bitch, you're going home too. Because it is an ice rink out there. I think Finland calls it like skull weather or something. I saw three people in the last 24 hours eat shit. And stay down. I thought I was going to go have to help this one old lady. But there was someone else closer. I was like three blocks away and I was walking in her direction. But then someone else helped her. So I was off the hook. But the... That that ice. And that's, that's the thing that I realized this winter. Driving around a little bit. Driving around a little bit more. Dude, Finnish people put so much trust into their snow tires because you have to have snow tires like legally on your car for a certain amount of time here with like the studs in them. And dude, motherfuckers drive like there isn't ice on the roads. People are in hurries. They're like, yeah, well, I have my winter tires on. I'm like, bitch, it's still ice. Y'all got to stop playing with Mother Nature, man. Mother Nature, always going to win. Mother Nature, undefeated. We're trying to manipulate Mother Nature through all this COVID bullshit, trying to take a knee, run the clock out on fucking Mother Nature. She doesn't play that, bro. You ain't going to beat Mother Nature. Yeah, but man, it's a good timing though with the the snow melting. It's been sunny every fucking day here for the last week. It feels so good. It's even the other day it was actually like warm enough that you could feel some heat radiating off the sun. That felt nice. And just in time, the bars are back open by. And it's crazy, bro, because when I was like 18 to 28, I never went out. I mean, I'd go out occasionally. Basically, I've only really started to like to go out in Finland. I mean, I guess in that, if I really think about that, throughout all that time, I would smoke weed a lot. And so, when you smoke weed a lot, it's sometimes hard to go out to the bars because you are asleep on the couch by 10 o'clock. What's that, Dr. Dre? Treat rap like Cali weed. I smoke till I sleep. Dude, I'm so jealous of kids these days. Oh, I gotta, I'll get back to the bar stuff, but... Because I, I got some shit on the bar stuff. 
but I'm so jealous of kids nowadays in a way. I mean, I think their life sucks way more like from a kid perspective than my life did as a kid. But dude, there's just so many more possibilities as a kid. Like one, you could legitimately be a pro gamer. Like that's an option. That's a thing in your head that you could do. Like, bro, I used to kill in Counter-Strike and Halo and all that shit. And if I would have known I could be making bread off of it for having other motherfuckers watch me play video games, dude, I wouldn't be talking to you fuckers, that's for sure. (laughs) But that, and then in combination with the fact that, dude, It's socially accessible. No. What's the word I'm looking for? It's socially acceptable now for a white rapper that's not from the hood. You could be a suburban kid and be a white rapper now and make it and not get laughed out of the fucking building. Dude, if that was how it was when I... I would be a rapper. I got fucking flow, bro. I still think by the time in like 10 years from now, at some point, I am going to have a hit song. Yeah. What I say by, I think I said by 2031. I said that I've been saying that dude, I got fucking flow dog. I used to be, I used to be the guy, the unassuming white dude that would go to parties And I could never freestyle. Freestyling wasn't my thing, but I could write. You know I'm creative, dog. And I could write. And I had maybe like 10 or 12 writtens that were fire. I'll I'll bless y'all with one of them one of these days. Or, you know, you might just have to wait till 2031 to hear it. And I would go to parties, house parties, and you know... You know how it goes. Always a group of brothers around freestyling. And I'd, you know, join, start bobbing my head. I was, I was, I've said it on here before. I wished I was black. I told my mom I wished I was black when I was five. So I've always felt like inundated, inundated. I don't know if that's the right word. I've always felt a part of the culture. You feel me? As a super white suburban kid. And so, you know, I joined the circle, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then, you know, listen to whatever instrumental was going and think in my head, all right, what? And I'd just be rapping. I wouldn't even be listening to anybody else rap. I'd just be in my own head like, okay, could I do it this, this written to this instrumental with that flow? Uh, no, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, that one. Work. Okay. Okay. And then just as soon as I could hop in there, fucking Mic check one, two, one, three on them. And heads would turn, dude. I got some. But that was, dude, that was like a way in to be accepted. Like right away. Like I remember when I first moved to Cali. I moved there with my boy Jamal. And that helped me too to like, is I had, I had like, a brother to vouch for me amongst everybody else. But then when we'd go to the party and then we'd get into that little circle and that thing and I could bust it down, I was in there like swimwear, boy. So, yeah. But I'm jealous of kids now, man. You could be a professional gaming rapper. That's as a blonde hair, blue eyed white kid now. Dude, the only way you could be a rapper when I was growing up was if you were Eminem. That's it. Paul Wall got on the scene a little bit late. But basically, you had to be from the hood. That was it. Now, bro, if I got a face tattoo at 16, spitting my flows, playing Fortnite, dude... Million dollars. Give it to me. Huh. 
So these kids, <laughs> these kids these days, they don't know what the fuck they got. They got it made, dude. But all right, back to the bars. The bars opened up this week. Tuesday was the first night out, and so you know your boy had to go see what all the fuss was about for the culture, you know? Because as I said, that first night, it's about to go down. And it did. And you could tell there were some people that weren't used to the bars being open till 4 a.m. They were used to that 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock cutoff date because there were some people fucked up by 11 or 12. And Finland is the only place in the world where someone can be passed out at the bar, arguably unconscious, and no one is even phased by it. It's just like, oh, <laughs> oh, you ho, <laughs> he does that. It's like, yeah, I don't think that's healthy, bro. Like the the amount of people you just see just in a chair, just like slump God is insane. And Tuesday was no, no exception. So I had, I had my little fun, had a, had a good little night that night. And then what else? What else? I went out last night. Last night was pretty fucking fun. It was really fun. I ended up, dude, I obviously like Quopio because I found myself last night defending it. I was talking to someone and they were like, well, no, I'm from Espo. But I, unfortunately, I live in Quopio. And I was like, Quopio's dope. They're like, well, <laughs> no. And I was like, well, what, uh, what's different? She's like, well, the, the people here are kind of simple. And I was like, what? And then we talk a little more. And they're like, yeah, but in Espo... You can't ever talk to anybody. Everyone's so fucking mean. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, are you arguing for or against Espo right now? I was like, aren't people in Quopio nice and friendly? Way more so than there? Well, yeah. Yeah, you can like say hi to somebody and they'll say it back. Well, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's fucking better than the opposite. And then I caught myself at the end. I was like, Wait a minute. I'm defending Quopio. Okay. Okay. I I got I got love for Quopio, man. I don't really know too many other places. I do like I think Tampere is my favorite city. But Quopio's Quopio's good, man. Quopio's good. Oh yeah, I got it. I got a couple more little stories from going out these last couple nights. And I learned this this little, uh, what would it be called? <laughs> What's a euphemism? Euthanasia is fucking killing it's like somebody. What's a euphemism? I want to I, I want to make this a good sentence. Or what's a soliloquy? Both of those words come to mind. Hold on, let me look this up. Soliloquy, an act of speaking one's thoughts aloud when by oneself or regardless of any hearers, especially by a character in a play. Oh, so I'm basically always doing soliloquies. Soliloquy? A part of a play involving a soliloquy. Oh, no shit. Okay, what was the other one I wanted to say? A euphemism. A mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm not going to use euphemism. I'm just going to, okay, well, sorry to waste your last minute of me talking about this shit. But a little known fact and a weird translation in the Finnish language is at the end of the night when someone's really fucked up and you're friends with them, 
and they go to leave and they just tell you, fuck you. What they really mean is, I love you, bro. Because that, that's, that's one, one thing that's a, a unique Finnish euphemism. Threw it in there, you feel me? But. Dude, yeah. It was fun going out. Super fun, super fun, super fun. I got, I have to say, I got recognized more than ever the last time I went out. And I'll admit, my ego enjoys it. But then it's funny because someone will come up to me and be like, dude, I'm such a big fan. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I was like, you listen to the podcast? And they're like, no. I was like, well, I, you're not that big of a fan then, motherfucker. <laughs> like, I appreciate it, really do, but to call yourself a big fan when all you do is listen to is 30 second clips when I got an hour and a half out, motherfucker, you can't call yourself your biggest fan. So, (laughs) then I had this one girl come up to me. (laughs) She asked me in Finnish, da-da-da-da-da, podcastia? And so I know what the fuck she's asking. I go, oh, sorry, I don't speak Finnish. Oh, do you have a podcast? And I'm like, yeah. Because that's normally not how people approach me. It's normally about TikTok. Although at first for first time in a while, I've, I've, I'm have i just getting people saying, hey, living for a living, rather than, hey, TikTok guy. And hearing living for a living feels so much fucking better than, hey, TikTok guy. <laughs> but she came up, asked me if I had a podcast. I said, yeah. And I thought she was hitting on me, to be honest. And maybe she was. I don't know. But I was talking with Aunt, and I was talking with somebody else. And so I'm, like, kind of ignoring her. Not, not like, in a mean way or anything, but I'm just in a conversation. And I forget how it was. I don't even really remember how the conversation went, but it, she's just kind of hanging around. And then at, finally she was just like, well, I wanted to tell you that my – no, what did she say? She said – my friend, well, just so you know, my friend said that you say a lot of misogynistic things on your podcast, and I wanted to tell you I don't like that. And I went, uh, okay. So do you listen to it? Did, did you know anything about it? No. So you came over here to tell me you don't like what I do despite the fact of you having no clue what I have said or what I do. Oh, okay. Well, have a wonderful night. (laughs) And after that, I was like, well, I definitely misread that one. I thought she was for sure hitting on me. (laughs) And then, okay, last, last story from this weekend. And... It, it was it was too good, too good. Because I was in the bathroom, and that's where it can get real fucking bro in the bathroom. It's either the bathrooms in Finland are either like this weird alternative twilight zone where just no one fucking talks at all, or it's like a hangout. And so I was in there. I'm, I go to the urinal. I take a piss, and there's a dude just kind of standing by the urinal, I think he's waiting to take a pee, but there's an open urinal, so I don't really know what the fuck's going on. And I, you know, get up to leave. I get up. I was already standing. But I go to leave. And he's like, dude, how do you do that? And I was like, do what? He's like, just like pee. I was like, uh, I stand there and relax and let it go. He's like, dude, I can't, I can't do that. He's like, but you, you, you pee in front of other guys. And I was like, yeah, bro. Like this is, this is not a new concept that we're talking about. I'm pretty sure bathrooms in public have been like this forever. And he's like, oh, I just can't do it. Like, what if, do what if someone looks at your dick or what if, do you look at people's dicks? I go, well, I mean, sometimes I, sometimes they're in my periphery. 
and I catch a glimpse, I wouldn't say I'm going to do it to look, but it happens. He's like, oh, I just can't do that. I'm thinking, dude, what the fuck? Like, this is coming from someone who's in sauna culture where you're naked in front of a whole bunch of random motherfuckers from the time you're yay high. And so one dude was taking a piss at the time. And so like, I mean, I guess I'm the bro in this situation. So I pat him on the shoulder. I kind of just like tap him. I'm like, do you agree with him? Thinking he's going to be on my side because here he is taking a fucking piss in front of everybody. And he's like, no, man, it's so awkward. And I was like, what? He's like, I, I can't go now. You just touched my shoulder. I was like, yeah, I tap like, bro, what? It's like, you're drunk. Yeah, but now I, I can't go. And I was like, man, you motherfuckers are weird. And I wasn't going to tell that story. But then what the guy said was, oh, no, now you're going to make a TikTok about me. And so I had no thought to do it in the moment. But as soon as he said that, I was like, you are right, my friend. And here is your TikTok. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I realized after episode 102 that people do not want to hear me talk about the war, at least from like a common sense, non-comedic way, which I, I get, I understand. I was, I, I'm sorry because I was fucking bored listening to myself talk about that when I had to listen back on it to edit it. So my apologies, but I will say. This last week, I watched Red Dawn on Netflix. And by the way, Netflix is now raising their prices to like 15 or 16 bucks a month, which is absolutely insane. I guess they got to pay Chappelle some way. But fuck, that's crazy. But anyway, I was watching Red Dawn because I'm going to go back to the States next Christmas. So I kind of I got to get prepared for some shit to go down. You feel me? And Red Dawn's an interesting movie. I'd rec- It's not great by any means, but interesting premise. It's good to watch. Make you think a little bit. Basic backstory is the North Korean slash Chinese slash Russian coalition invades the west side of the U.S. And it takes place in Washington, I think in Spokane. So it kind of hits close to home on numerous levels. And so they kind of like take over this city, the the opposition. And it's up to these two brothers and hodgepodge of friends to like start their own militia, get together guns, devise a plan to get guns from the enemies and take back their city and take shit back. And so, it, you know, it's like it's inspiring, you know, given the Ukraine shit that's going on right now. But it just like made me think because when you're watching it, you're thinking like, fuck yeah, fuck those guys up. Like America, like yeah. But on the flip side, there's the exact same movie of American military going into a um, Middle Eastern city. And they're the opposition. And then there's the like the local guys the terrorists in the movie are trying to kill them. And in that movie, you're like, man, fuck those terrorists. Fuck those guys. And so it's like, bro, it's kind of the same thing. You know, like, let's keep it real here. So just the idea of like going into another country and like thinking, oh yeah, they're going to want us here. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm sure throughout history, there's probably been a few instances where they have been welcomed. But overall, if you think about it, bro, you don't want anyone coming into your city. 
And so it, it just like watching it as I was watching it and I'm thinking like, yeah, fucking get them. America. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. If the shoe was on the other foot, I'd still be saying, yeah, America, get them. But they'd be the other guys. So that's, that's a, that's a interesting thing to think about. You guys do some thinking right there, huh? But now there is just some weird shit going on with Ukraine and everything. And, um, I, I just don't get the like FIFA soccer game has like taken Russia out of the game. They're trying to like ban Russian people from playing on Xbox live. Like, dude, let them, let them play call of duty. Let them get their fix that way. Keep them inside. Like canceling Xbox Live is only going to create some more dudes who want to go fucking play Call of Duty in real life. And like F1 or something. There's just all these like obscure organizations or maybe not obscure, but like irrelevant organizations kind of banning things having to do with Russia. Like I get, okay, yeah, let's not buy their oil. Let's, you know, not trade with them. And like, yeah, I get that. That makes sense. That's like part of like the grand scheme of war. Like I, I get it. I get it. But to not let a dude play Xbox live, how is that helping? That's not helping at all. You're losing a membership. You know, it's like, I, I just don't get, and so ultimately dude, you know, I, I feel bad for everybody, but I also have compassion. I feel bad for the common Russian motherfucker because most likely they don't want to be invading Ukraine and now their economy is fucked. Think about someone who'd worked their whole life had everything saved up, had something in the fucking stock market over there, and now they ain't got shit. All because Putin's trying to play fucking risk in real life. You know, I feel I feel bad for that, dude. And on top of that, now, like, Russians are looked at in this super negative light to the world. And I was, I was actually, yeah, fuck, I forgot. I was walking through the city center a couple days ago and there was some little event going on in the, in the market square, somebody up on a stage. And it was this girl saying, you know, I'm from Russia and you know, they were like doing their condolences for Ukraine. And she's saying, you know, I'm just so sorry for what my country's doing and I'm sorry and blah, 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 blah. And it's like super thoughtful that she's saying that and like nice that she's saying it, but she she doesn't have to say that. She's fucking in Finland. She's not the reason for any of this. And so like this guilt that's then put on people, it's just fucked up, dude. It's fucked up. It just, and then on top of all that, you know, they've, between the, Canadian um Canadian truck convoy thing and now the Russia thing they're just like shutting people's bank accounts off and shutting things down and and you know manipulating the system in that way so it's like okay so you guys have had the power to do this the whole fucking time how come we don't uh do that for like sex trafficking, human trafficking people or super big drug dealers or like what? I mean, it's scary to be honest. I, I'm actually really not proposing we do it ever because I'm going to say something on this podcast in 20 years from now and it's going to say, sorry, your funds are frozen. You talk shit about Joe Hunter Biden Please go to the police station and then you'll never hear from me again. 
So, but I, I guess I'm just saying, if they're going to do it, can we do it for other reasons that would make sense? You know what I mean? But yeah, th- but yeah, this this shit all with social media is just crazy because like pretty much every cool video that's came out and people have talked about and has gone viral, whether it be the the like Russian ship talking to the Ukrainian people saying, you know, drop your weapons or whatever and they say fuck you motherfucker or uh you know, certain videos of bombings or a girl going up and telling the army to go home like pretty much everything that's been viral about this thing has been fake and either from past wars or just isn't true and it's so easy to trick americans too when all you have to do is put subtitles with a extra language in the background because nobody knows a second language and so it just, it like makes me think, you know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm at a, I have a predeposition now to anything I kind of see on social media and mainstream media, especially it's like, well, I don't believe that, you know, I don't believe that at all. And so I don't really know too much what to think. I got a message from a listener in response to what I was saying about Ukraine, I don't even really remember exactly what I was saying. Just kind of the common sense. And he, he like out can, I'm, I would say, you know, you could call me a conspiracy theorist and I, I can, I consider myself more a conspiracy factist, but you could, you could call me a conspiracy theorist. Like, you know, for instance, nine 11 was for sure an inside job. I think that's, you know, I know it's not proven, but it like, kind of is. But, um, and Yane, I got the episode for you. We're going to get into some conspiracy theories. But anyway, he sent me a message talking about and explaining the kind of, uh, the con- quote unquote conspiracy thing that's going on that, who knows, it could be true. I, I don't know. What I will say regarding some of the conspiracy stuff, I used to like really enjoy going down the rabbit hole and I actually went down the rabbit hole just a little bit on this one, just to, just to see what was being said. But my feelings now is I really don't concern myself too much with it. I don't want to put too much of my thoughts or energy towards those things and ideas because at the big scale at the big picture, like I'm not going to be in the Illuminati. I'm not going to take this shit over. And so all it can really do is make me mad and paranoid and like, you know, like I'm going to fucking do what I want to do and I'm going to maneuver through the rules that are in place. That's the thing. Like don't try and change the rules. Changing the rules takes so much fucking effort. You just find the loopholes in the rules. You know? Like, if you're out of timeouts and it's late in the game and the team's running a hurry or the team's running a hurry up offense and you're tired on defense, you fake an injury. Or you cramp up. It's just a really small cramp. Is it right? No, not exactly. But it's part of the rules. It's like if you're a millionaire, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about here, obviously. I'm just, I've heard this. And you want to avoid paying taxes, you buy something that's a, a, a business purchase or something. So that way your business at the end nets nothing and then you don't have to pay any taxes. I think I heard Grant Cardone one time say like, you know, he bought a jet because it ends up so he would have had to pay that money in taxes. Listen, don't come at me, you accountants, unless you're an OnlyFans accountant. 
Or the other thing, you just move your money offshores. Give it to the old Swiss. They'll do the old looky-loo the other way. They got no problem with that. So there's always ways to manipulate the thing. And so for me to get all like (sighs) obsessed with it and get into all the YouTube videos and the rabbit holes and the fucking Reddit posts, all power to you. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm just talking for myself. It's just for me, not, it's not worth my energy. It's not worth, because at the end of the day, I don't think I'm going to change or solve anything from that. It's not going to help me throw a fade better. It's not going to help me sell some merch better. And it's not, I mean, maybe if I became like Alex Jones kind of thing, it's not going to make the podcast better. Maybe it would make the podcast better. But yeah, that's, that's the one thing is, you know, Finnish people right now are a little bit uptight about, oh, comparing Ukraine to, well, it it would be the same. They could invade us. It's like, yeah, they technically could. But to say like Finland's the same as Ukraine is not right and not true at all. The territory value is much different the recent history and relationship of war and conflict is much different so it's like i get the concern but at the same time to like oversimplify it that well they're a small country and we're a small country so and we're both not in nato so we could it's the same is not right it's like It's different completely. And on top of that, I'm not stressed. I'm not worried because Finnish military is fucking them up, bro. Shout out to all the Finnish military dudes because I meet you drunk motherfuckers at the bars all the time. And while I hope you're not drinking while you're defending, I fucks with you. Yeah, that's actually a, a cool a cool thing here. Like it, it, and and I respect you a lot too because I would never want to be in the military, and because you're doing something that I would never want to do, I have a lot of respect for that. Well, I I guess I need to preface that saying because it's like I would never want to be a pedophile, I would never want to murder someone in cold blood. And so I don't respect the people that do that. I respect people who do things that I would never want to do that are honorable. How about that? So, yeah. Well, okay. And so let me get back to the conspiracy rabbit hole. So I I, I listened to what uh, the message said. And I, I dump, dive down the little rabbit hole. I had seen the meme saying that uh, Carrie Biden, Pelosi, and one other politician, U.S. politician had sons that worked for Ukrainian gas companies. I'd seen that meme at some point, and I believed it just off of seeing it because it wouldn't surprise me at all, like at all. We're, I'm going to, uh, well, damn, we're, we're cooking right now. I'm going to get into a conspiracy at the end of this that is 100% true and proven. And if you don't think that governments will have no regard for their citizens, just wait. But anyway, I, I dug into the whole like sons working for the gas company thing. And that isn't true. It's if, if it said that those four or five uh four or five politicians had people that were close to them that were then also in relations or had ties to Ukraine gas companies then it would be true but that's kind of like the little the little like bait and switch with some of these like fact check type things is they i almost here, here's a conspiracy i almost think sometimes the opposition puts out the crazy conspiracy 
and like makes it more crazy. Even though it's like semi true, they like over exaggerate it. So that way it can get fact checked and then be proven to be false because it's so crazy because I got to like kind of read this right now. I did a little rabbit hole diving, did a little research and this is what it, this is what I got. All right. Is according to that claim is, and hey, this is an attack. I'm not going to name who, who sent it to me because, uh, you know, I just, but this ain't a, an attack at all. I really appreciate the message. You know that, I hope, because it challenges me. But because then I had to look into this shit. And so here, here's what I found is that on that little claim of the politician's connection, whatever, and this is how I'm talking about the war from now on. Straight conspiracy, straight alternative shit. I got to throw something funny in there at some point. But Biden's son is the only one that truly did have direct ties and worked for a Ukrainian gas company. It was called the Burisma, Burisma company. He doesn't work for them anymore. But I think we all know that uh, that situation is sketchy as fuck. And there is some weird shit revolving uh, just relations in general with U.S. politicians and Ukraine. Like through history. Like going back to the Clintons and shit. So Biden's son did work for a, a Ukrainian gas company at some point. In terms of John Kerry, he visited Ukraine and offered $1 billion in aid after protesters took over the government in 2014, I believe. Kerry's top campaign fundraiser, along with Biden's son, were then named to the board of Burisma, the gas company. So it wasn't, that's why I said it would be people close to the politicians. It, you know, it was the, the top campaign fundraiser. It wasn't one of his kids. Then from 09 to 13, the Clinton Foundation received $8.6 million from a Ukrainian foundation in hopes to modernize Ukraine. And it's just like weird to me. Why is a Ukraine foundation sending money that's already kind of a poor country, sending money to a rich country that's 5,000 miles away to help modernize them? You would think if you just kept that money in the country, it would help, but I digress. Oh, Mitt Romney was the other one I heard. His top aide was hired by the Burisma as lead security and strategic development efforts. So again, someone close to them. Pelosi was a board member of Viscoli and an executive at Pelosi at related company NRG Lab, which did energy business in Ukraine. Oh, this is Pelosi's like son or, or daughter. I think son. Pelosi's son was a board member of Viscolian executive at the related NRG Lab, which did energy business in Ukraine. After his mom became Speaker of the House, he was hired for a no-show job, which he was not qualified for from a firm that did have connection to the Clintons. I don't know. I forget in the research if that firm is also a Ukrainian one too, I believe. The one that does sketch me out the most, all of those, a little sketchy. I'll give it to you. I agree. The one that sketches you out the most, if you're anything into any conspiracies at all, is George Soros has a connection and vested interest in Ukraine. And that, that one was like, there were a lot of fucking moving parts and a lot of like, this person connected to that person to the, you know, and, and, but anything regarding George Soros is sketchy. So the, and then the, the next part of the, the message I got, the next part of the quote unquote, and I, like I said, I'm not talking down at all to the conspiracy theory. I'm all for thinking and thinking about why, and you know, not just taking what's given to us from the jump. I'm all for it. And so um, I, I, when I say conspiracy theory, I'll be, uh, I hope you guys know, I don't mean it in any like negative connotation at all. But the next part of the conspiracy is that Russian is, Russia is targeting Ukraine biolabs 
which that idea has been promoted by the Russian embassy themselves. Um, also, like China has been saying that too. And there's some weird, you know, propaganda going on in Russia. You know, they're talking about the reason they're invading Ukraine is to like stop Nazism and stuff like, you know, so there's some weird shit going from both sides. Don't get me wrong. Um, and so there's like, according to this, the, um, the Russia is trying to take out these bio labs because they're going to be used f- to keep creating COVID shit basically and bio weapons, which is kind of, I think the next future of war in a, in a way, you know, and, and like I said, I don't look down on any of this because during the start of COVID, like I was pretty much fully on board that like with the whole like 8chan Reddit threads that were talking about how it was kind of a, a way for Trump to get the pedophiles and there were kids being taken through underground tunnels and that's why we were wearing masks so much and all of that stuff. And, and look, I was like kind of on board. I was waiting for it to happen. And maybe, maybe that's the reason some of that should happen, but it never came to light. And I don't ever know, and I will never know. And as much as I I care, I don't fucking care. So, I'm just not gonna like. I mean, I guess I like talking about it. I like thinking about it, but I'm not gonna spend more than thirty minutes before a podcast to write it down. Let's just put it that way. You know, I, I just, I, I'm slowly turning the page in my mind of like, I just fully support anyone doing what they want to do. It's your right to be brainwashed and wear a mask in the forest while you're alone or in the car while you're alone. It's your right. And I support you for being brainwashed. It's your right to go down the rabbit holes and think a conspiracy thing is there and all that. It's your right to not do that. Like as long as at the end of the day, we could maybe have a conversation and get a beer and talk and not be mortal enemies because we think something different on one fucking topic. Do and think whatever the fuck you want. As long as you're nice to somebody, you know what I mean? So, now, the moment we've all been waiting for, to finally talk about a real conspiracy fact, and I did some diving on this one, and I'd already, I'd always like bring it up, it's probably like my favorite conspiracy fact to bring up when people like say, well, the government just wants what's best for us, and they'd never hurt anybody, not innocent people. They never would. No. So, we are going to talk about MK Ultra, And I got some of this shit here written down, so I'm going to kind of read it from how I, I wrote it down. So, I apologize for not looking in the camera, looking in, into your soul and your eyes. But just trust me, I wish I could. I'll, I'll try and look up. I'll do... This is like reading in fucking uh, class. But MK Ultra is it's one it's it's wild because someone will bring it up sometimes around someone else who has no clue about it, but it's been like labeled this conspiracy theory. And then that person who has absolutely no clue about it will literally laugh in your face about it. And say like, you believe that? It's like, well, yeah, there's like court hearings and and documents and testimonials and the CIA is admitted to it. All all of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I do believe that. So, class is now in session. 
MK Ultra. It was the code name for an illegal human experimentation program designed and carried out by the CIA. Started in 1953, right after World War II, and then it ended in 1973. It basically was like a continuation of what the Japanese and German people were doing in concentration camps and whatever the hell Japanese people were doing of trying to figure out a way to basically manipulate people's free will and like get them to admit something in interrogation. Um little note first before we I, I maybe this is kind of out of order but because this is kind of the ending in a way but the CIA director ordered that all the files be destroyed when they started to look into this in 1975 right around the time of Watergate there was a huge uh, paranoia in the government because they were doing some shit they didn't want people to find out about so he ordered that all the files be destroyed luckily and and they did they did they did uh, destroy most of them. Luckily, like 20,000 documents didn't get destroyed because they were held in the wrong, um, they were in the wrong area. They were in like a financial folder. I think at this time in the world, like you had actual for- folders. Yeah. 19, yeah. And so in just, I want to preface all this with like the real shit because someone's going to be like, well, it's not proven. And then in 1977, the Freedom Information Act request uncovered those 20,000 documents relating to MKUltra and some other surviving information about it was declassified in July of 01. So that they kind of knew about it for like 23, 24 years. And it, then it wasn't declassified to the public for that time. So I think this all this all relates really good to the kind of war shit, the COVID shit, manipulation. You think about they don't want to release the, the vaccine reports and stuff until 70, 50 years later. Huh. You know, once it dies, <laughs> once no one remembers what it was even about and it's in the history books... And then by that time, it's just gotten over and over time just considered to be a conspiracy theory that even when the facts come out, it doesn't matter because it's just been ingrained in people's head as conspiracy. So, the purpose, like I said, of MKUltra was to develop procedures and identify drugs such as LSD that could be used in interrogation to weaken people and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. They were basically trying to find a truth drug to interrogate Soviet uh, spies and and war people. Because this is like right around the time of the Cold War and that kind of stuff. It was also used uh, other method. It also used other methods to manipulate test subjects, mental states such as high doses of psychoactive drugs, electroshocks, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and verbal and sexual assault. Like I said, it was like a continuation from the Japanese and German camps that were going on during World War II because they were testing this shit out. It was also kind of in response, the reasoning they give for doing it is because they knew that Chinese and Russian and, and, and North Korean people were trying certain techniques to do it on U.S. prisoners of war. So it was kind of like a competition in a way and like if you're going to do it we're going to do it type of thing the cia had secretly though recruited some of the nazi doctors that were doing the stuff in the concentration camps they were flown in that's also i guess that's a conspiracy for another day about how a lot of the nazi doctors and higher ups like somehow got all over the world. Uh, let's see. What's my next? I got a, quite a bit written down. Uh, it says, U.S. was also interested in these techniques on their own captives or using these techniques on their own captives 
and they were interested in manipulating foreign leaders with these techniques. And like one goal was to make it like a Manchurian uh, candidate thing, basically like a puppet government and being able to make people do and say shit either so that they could control them or to do it so that they would say some crazy shit and then lose all trust and respect. So that way then they could like come on in. You know, the U.S. likes to do that. Uh, These activities were carried out under the guise of research at more than 80 institutions, including colleges, hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies, surprisingly. They spent an estimated $10 million on these experiments, which was roughly $90 million today. Most of the subjects in the experiments were unknowing and obviously, therefore, didn't consent, which goes against the Nuremberg Code that was agreed to by the U.S. after World War II. Uh, Some experiments included giving LSD to mental patients, prisoners, drug addicts, and prostitutes, basically to people who could not fight back, as one of the agents put it. In one case, they gave a mental patient LSD for 174 straight days. And as somebody that is a fan of LSD, holy fuck, that would be insane. The kicker, kind of, or the, I mean, there's a lot of kickers, I guess, but they'd also give LSD to CIA import, uh, employees, military personnel, doctors, and other government agents, in addition to the general public, and then study their reactions. Most of them without knowing. Sometimes if they said if, um, if someone agreed to it, like doing the test, they would really do some crazy shit because they agreed. <laughs> Yeah, so the goal of this was to find drugs that would bring out deep confessions and wipe subjects' mind clean and program them as robot agents. Because there was also like a lot of paranoia that at this time that communism had like infiltrated and the Soviets had infiltrated the U.S. system and that there was like a mole in the system. So that's their reasoning for doing all of this. There was a one thing called Operation Midnight Climax where the CIA set up at several brothels in San Francisco to get men that would be too embarrassed to talk about it. And they gave these men all extreme high doses of LSD and then watched them through one-way mirrors. It says, uh, as experiments progress, CIA employees outside of the group... Um, Oh, the outside of the like group in the know. So just people in CIA that weren't in this like testing unit were also drugged with no explanation and no warning. And it just became as known as like a occupational hazard of working at the CIA, which this led to Frank Olson, who was a CIA guy, a former army chemist who had never taken LSD. He committed suicide nine days after the dosing because it caused him severe depression. And like, you know, that's, and he, he's the guy, he jumped like 13 stories off a building. And so there's like this kind of rumor thing with LSD that like, oh, you'll jump off a building because you think you can fly or whatever. And I, I don't think that's true at all. Um, but I think that's where that little like myth comes from is from him jumping off and doing that. He wasn't even on LSD when he did kill himself. And as I've said before, like I'm a proponent of psychedelics. They've been, I view very beneficial in my life, but I also don't think they're for everyone. And I don't like, I don't think they're for me when I'm in a bad place. Like I wouldn't recommend. And it's, it's, they're now starting to do a lot more research on this shit. And they say, you know, people that are schizophrenic and already have depression issues and and those type of things, like doing it the wrong way will really fuck you up because it opens up some shit in your brain that can really be beneficial and enlightening. But if done in the wrong way, wrong dose, wrong setting, all that shit, it can fuck you up even further. Um, the, the sad thing and that the Frank Olson death was like 
when they went back and everything was in court and they were hearing every that was like considered to be the one death that was a hundred percent associated with the experiments, even though a lot of other people died during it. Um, and the, the fucked up thing is like Olson supposedly had asked to resign sometime earlier before, before all of this stuff, before he killed himself because of like, he felt bad morally about what was going on at the end. Ultimately LSD was dismissed as it was considered too unpredictable with its results. And they gave up the notion that it was the secret that was going to unlock the universe. Which is so ironic because I would beg to differ. (laughs) And it just, it wasn't the key to unlock the universe in terms of them manipulating and exploiting people, no. But it can be the key to the universe in terms of loving yourself and and finding meaning in life and seeing us all as connected and one with the earth which i guess call me a hippie but i think all of those things are more the secret of the universe rather than manipulating and exploiting people during interrogations so hope you're still with me all right hope you're still with me getting almost there but one of the craziest parts of it is at one point they recruited a British psychiatrist, Donald Ewan Cameron, because the CIA had found he was doing some like driving psychiatrist experiments, which the CIA found very interesting. And those, I didn't, I didn't understand exactly what it meant by driving, but that's how, what they called them. And this dude's experiments consisted of putting subjects into drug induced comas for weeks up to three months in one case, while playing loops of noise or simple repetitive statements. And his experiments were normally carried out on people who entered the Institute for Common Problems like Anxiety or Postpartum Depression. Unknowingly. And here's the kicker to all of that. Here's the big kicker to that story. is During his era, while he was doing all of this, He became known worldwide as the first chairman to the World Psychiatric Association and was president of both the American and Canadian Psychiatric Association. He was also a member of the Nuremberg Medical Tribunal from 46 to 47. So when they say like trust the experts and you're not an expert and you don't know, There's reason from history to say like, well, maybe the experts didn't have the best intentions. And I'm not saying all of them all the time have been that exact same way, but one of them has been that way. So it's possible another one could be that way. You know, I know Fauci is an American hero at this point, even though the way he handled AIDS in the 90s, like basically killed a ton of people, one of my friend's dad included. And you could say he was terrible in how he handled and talked about all that. So it's like, it's not impossible or out of the imagination that like maybe he's not doing exactly the best thing but i know the government would never hurt anybody never second to last thing there are also secret detention camps under american control mainly in japan germany and the philippines in the 50s so that the u.s could do some of these experiments with absolutely no prosecution because it was not happening on our soil even though we were doing it on our soil too i bet those experiments in the philippines were fucking crazy and everything that i just said is literally just like a fraction of the information given the fact that i said most of the files had been deleted and destroyed 
Um, and so, yeah, they stopped doing it in 73. It took four years for the hearing to first happen. And it took even longer in Canada. And then it was learned when it came became known in Canada that the CIA had not only funded Dr. Cameron's efforts, but the Canadian government was fully aware of everything that they were doing too and proved, approved additional funding to him. The Canadian government eventually settled out of court for $100,000 each for 127 victims. Then it wasn't until 1994. So stopped in 73, one trial in 77, and then 94 that the U.S. General Account Office issued a report that states between 1940 and 1974, the Department of uh, DOD, Department of Defense, and other nations, security agencies, studied thousands of human subjects in tests and experiments involving hazardous substances. So that was from, like I said, the U.S. General Account Office. But of course... That's all just a conspiracy, you guys. And last thing, switching topics, speaking of psychedelics, Aaron Rodgers just got back from a 12-day cleanse. And I've been saying it for years, that dude is on the psychs for sure. I'll, I'll have to get into it like maybe like once I'm done playing, at least the details. But the way that he's throwing the ball, I think there's a definite, uh, I think, and I'm, this is not, this is not my own idea at all. There's doctors, psychologists, other athletes that think this, that psychedelics can be a performance enhancing drug if used in the correct way. Um, and so if you watch how he's throwing, like, I think Tom's probably been fucking with some shrooms too over his time. But if you watch how Rogers has been slinging that thing the last couple of years, and then you also listen to how he talks on the McAfee show and really speaks his truth and is open and, and, and forward and calm and the, the vocabulary he uses and the way of being he is. Ya boy is doing his own MK Ultra. <laughs> All right. We'll call it a day. I hope this one was better than last one. I have a feeling it was. This one was really fun for me to do. And uh I got a I got a uh I'll have a guest coming up. Next week, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say who yet, but it'll be a good one. I'm excited. All righty. Appreciate y'all. Check out the website. Please hit the fucking thumbs up. Hit the five star on Spotify at this point. I know if whoever's listening to it at this point already did it. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. Appreciate you. Until next time. Peace and much love. Holla. Yeah, Iraq.